My name is Tara McGinn and I'm a Catalyst Arts co-director and uh, I am joined tonight by my colleague Manuela Moser who's also a Catalyst Arts co-director and we have both been leading this project and if we observe the present which is an exhibition of new visual work that employs photography as a multi through a multidisciplinary approach and as also we are share um oh, sorry trying to share my screen <laughs> uh, we are also joined tonight by our writers for a publication in response to the exhibition so this project is part of Belfast Photo Festival 2021 themed futures and was kindly supported by the Arts Council of Northern Ireland Stability Annual Fund. Through an open call process, we invited artists who employ photography in their practice to propose their idea of how a future can be visualized, predicted and prepared for. We selected four artists from across the island of Ireland for their unique interpretation of the call out. And they are Kitch Doom, Ben Malcolmson, Kate McElroy and Donald Talbot. Uh, collectively, their work comes together in the gallery examining queer and rural dichotomies, uh, deconstructed and reimagined identities, the visibility of ruin and decay, and the decentralization of AI technology. The exhibition is open in Catalyst Arts until the 10th of July and is open from Tuesdays to Saturdays from 11 till 5. And uh, so I will pass you over to my colleague Manuela Moser, who will introduce the writers and will be followed shortly by the readings from the writers themselves. So. I will stop sharing my screen. Um, hi everyone, uh, I'm Manuela and I'm delighted to introduce our three writers tonight, Harvey Diamond, Ty Ojo and Lucy McLachlan. I hope I've got that right. Um, so I'll read each of their bios now and then um, they'll read. So Harvey is a British Barbadian writer, researcher and artist living and working between Glasgow, Scotland and Athens, Greece. Through their practice, they examine the relationship between the climate crisis, anti-blackness and homotransphobia. They were awarded a Decolonizing Collections Research Residency by the Decolonizing Arts Institute at UAL in 2021 and an Emerging Curators Bursary from the British Art Network. Tai is a Nigerian poet. He is the winner of many awards, including the 2021 Hay Writers Circle Poetry Competition. He also makes use of collage and sampling techniques. And Lucy is a Belfast born artist, writer and critic currently based in Glasgow. She is interested in working across disciplines, exploring writing as a studio practice and new and experimental forms of criticism. She often works with sound, moving image, drawing and performance. Her research is grounded in thinking around the entangled relationship between world and word. Where language and poetics are not limited to the page, but might become images and ideas made unfamiliar by a collapse in distance between the ordinary and the imaginative. Political atmospheres and socio-psychological states are explored in her work by embracing the oxymora of the creative and critical. So before we begin, I just want to let you know that the work is currently be being collected together into a publication, which will be available at the beginning of July in the Catalyst Gallery and via online platforms, which we're currently sorting out. So drop us an email if you'd like any further information. And I'd like to thank the Belfast Photo Festival for having us. Um, it's such a wonderful festival and we're so happy to be part of it. And after the readings, we'll have a QA. and a So if you want to um, pop any questions in the chat, then we'll uh, ask them to the writers. So now I'd like to pass over to Harvey. Thank you, Manuela. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm going to read from my text, uh, which is titled uh, Things I Imagined. Um, I'm just going to switch my camera off um, while I read. While having conversations with the four artists exhib exhibiting in And If We Observe the Present and viewing the progress of the exhibition from afar, the writing of Jose Esteban Munoz on queer potentialities came to mind. In Cruising Utopia, the then and now of queer futurity, Munoz writes, queerness is not yet here. Queerness is an ideality. Put another way, we are not yet queer. We may never touch queerness, but we can feel it as the warm illumination of a horizon 
imbued with potentiality. We have never been queer, yet queerness exists for us as an ideality that can be distilled from the past and used to imagine a future. All the works in this exhibition speak to the idea of potentialities, illuminations and idealities, referencing queerness explicitly and implicitly, loudly and quietly in the urban and the rural sphere. Queerness reimagines the family, it reimagines the home, it reimagines the promise of safety, it reimagines the cities and the landscapes we live in and move through. Donald Talbot's photographic and sculptural works visualise the potentialities of queer existences in rural spaces. The disco ball, neon signage and luminous golden material allude to the hazy stillness before or after a party takes place. When I first saw Donald's work in progress in May, the first thing that my mind roamed to was rave culture, specifically the era of free parties in England in the late 1980s and early 90s. Sound systems and promoters who had previously put on parties in big cities such as Manchester and London started to move their events out to the countryside. My mum was part of this scene and uh, her and her friends would often spend Friday and Saturday nights driving around the M25, the circular motorway that wraps itself around London, waiting to get a phone call, a tip off to the location of a party. Sometimes the parties lasted only one night but some lasted for a week, more akin to a festival. During this time, the pastoral, sometimes disturbingly peaceful English countryside became the hedonistic playground of an eccentric and diverse group of people from the inner cities who ordinarily may have viewed rural areas with fear and hostility. While the traditional insular nature of rural spaces would understandably cause discomfort for marginalized groups, Many people are starting to realize the soulful benefits of interacting with the natural world, in the last 18 months especially. There seems to be an increasing recognition of rural spaces as places of healing and connection, not just places to escape from as quickly as possible. This renewed interest has sparked much activity from queer gardening collectives to walking groups for people of color. Perhaps now urban areas, which were previously so desirable for the young, are losing their appeal. A reimagination of family and lineage is explored in Kit Doom's work, drawing on the heteronormative family structures to create new post humans that in turn mocks the nuclear family. Junior and Loring, the two cyborgs, cyborgs with human parents, wear garments that combine fetish gear with the aesthetic of protest and civil unrest and totally encapsulate rebellion, the rejection of tradition, and giving the middle finger to the normative. Despite their post-human identities, Kitsch also describes their relationships and tensions between the family members, which feel warmly human and familiar. In an American context, the heteronuclear family structure is replicated by queer and trans African-American and Latinx communities to create networks of solidarity, support and joy. Houses which were led by a mother, the natural leader, compete in voguing balls for ballroom glory and escape temporarily from their reality of rejection, abuse, and financial insecurity. The characters that Kitsch creates with so much thought and in ingenuity speak to of escapism and liberation. Here, queer bodies are liberated from the need to conform to a heteronormative world and instead exist freely, uh, rebellious and self-assured. Kitsch's installation in the space creates the impression of being in the bedroom of one of the characters an intimate space for experimentation and play, away from the prying eyes of the normative. What really shines through in this exhibition is how photography is made so malleable and how tactfully and intimately the artists work with the medium. This allows the artist to imagine futures while also reflecting on the present in all its complexities. In Ben Malcolmson's work, there is a real sense of the artist's intimacy with the materials. The strong sense of dislocation and isolation is so profound. And I think this really speaks to the experiences of many people during the pandemic. The way the 3D rendered figures are suspended alone in a black void and their apparent fragmentation and dissolution speak to a sense of dislocation that arises from confronting intersectional identities of having to reconcile experiences and realities that appear to be at odds with one another. In one of the frames of the projection, 
the vast shadow of the standing figure looms over, and there is a strong sense not only of foreboding and darkness, but also of vulnerability and tenderness. The malleability of photography is evident in the works by Kate McElroy, the move between the sculptural and the two-dimensional, and between organic and constructed forms. A large print created by Kate hangs in the space. It reminds me of a seismograph, which records the waves of energy an earthquake produces, suggesting movement and upheaval. But there is also something organic about these forms to move calmly like waves of lights or waves of water. The rubble and detritus that lies beneath another of the photographic work speaks to this idea of a liminal contested transitioning space. While so much discourse focuses on the leg legacy of colonialism on urban spaces, less is written about colonialism's reliance on extractivism and the subsequent destruction of the natural world. Here, the artist is bearing witness to the expansion of the urban and the destruction of the rural, which is viewed as progress by some, but as a travesty by others. And I'll hand back to Manuela, thank you. Thank you so much, Harvey. Um, that was really interesting. And we will now pass over to Ty, if you are there. Yeah. Hi. I think my video is You can put your video on if you want. I'm trying to put it on by saying the host that's open. Hello, everyone. Good evening. My name is Ty and Joe. Hello everyone, good evening. My name is Tayo Joe. I'm a poet from Nigeria. I was selected to be part of the artist being commissioned by the Catalyst Art Festival, Catalyst and Photo Festival. For Catalyst and Photo Festival, I was asked to develop some visual response to most of the artwork that have been exhibited in their, their gallery. And I was able to come up with some new poems, and I'll be reading them for this event. The first poem I wrote in response to the artwork that was being exhibited is titled, one of them is titled Strange Future. It says, unlike hope, which trick us with fixed expectation, my data insists we can view the world around us again if we choose. Any tree can be a ladder, and my heart begins to dream again. Is it memory if I stand by a riverside full of trash and plastic? Once someone told me I inherited my mother's heart. What I love, I press every moment like a garlic clove. I mean, my country is changing. How tricky this makes the world drought. And yet, the earth feels hotter today. When I say I miss home, what I mean is, I'm filled with dread. I doubt if the cyclone can distinguish my mother's poor shelter. Father comes quietly, and I skip through the long silence for the song my mother taught me while attempting to describe the many days of low rainfall. Yeah, the green pastures that become dust, carcasses of goats and sheep line the roadside. All climate refugees are posturalists, yet the reverse is hope. There has to be a way to save this filth in earth without sacrificing myself or my lovelies to cholera. Nothing restores the sense of loss less ambiguously than the feeling in which something is at stake. Do you think the earth will ever achieve healing? What about home? There are too many smokes. Yeah. I'm awake. It's murky outside. It must be the sandstorm. The terrible patterns that flows down from the names of our transgression. It reminds me of everything we we'll fail to do as a world. What do I know? As a world, sorry. And what do I know? What I do know is that there is no imaginary future if we we'll continue to stand on the same step ladder every few years and swap around reduced emissions. A second poem is titled, I'm creating foreign lands to leave my home. I'm nearing, I'm nearing 30. She's long dead. I sing although I have no song. I sing with putty over my eyes. A cold, excited fire warms the rolling flame. 
my mother and the modern life calling me. How everything is about, how everything about me is accent. Memory as in wealth, as in forgetfulness, when it's wanted, when it's needed, regret is a strong wall. I am where it is, a confession without any Catholic present. I need someone to hold me down. I'm where I'm supposed to be. I say rain, I mean mold. I mean cancer. I mean brochure. Not a fixed cell, more of a postcard from my grandmother. Lonely walk of a woman gone to war, and I climb into a gray forest, a mobile strip of endless youth on. Historical art, my mother with her eyes like abscess. As in how she keeps changing, how we have always been like this. Refugees made of country lanes, trees, flowers, and salt. I mean prisoners, I mean any child, any parents unhappy. A group of skin disease is called charity. There is a yellow finch at the door. As in shadows are crawling over me. My monument to shame, my monument to shame. Nothing but my bones are left. I've heard many years ago of our coastal wanderings, the rolling waves of our unhurried space, how this body is a sponge, a heap, and a lifesaver. This is how I find clarity. How I know I only want to live a newborn calf, cold and wet. The last poem I've been for this session is titled, In the Small Hand of Time. It was written after a theme, Follow. Somewhere in another country, an old man looks up quietly at the empty sky. In my dreams, my sister talks animatedly with the family of pine cones. After months of breathing in the ghosts of gum trees, of colas and cockatoos, how could we deny that we are not all connected, battered by fire, dust, floods, and hail? How could we pretend we are not completely reliant on the natural world. In my mouth, the seasons of regret, struggling with how to get on with post-pandemic life while just down the road, another massive fire trickles and potters, clearing underbrush, doing what they should do. In my shadow, my sister falls into the abyss of hunger, our inertial rushing into my veins. What terror lies in climate change? I touch them, my sister's side will longing. What is the board stays silent in my hand? Beside the village, I watch others gather by the last meal of dry bean leaves, handful by handful. They chew the longer parts of hope, wishing for nothing but rain. It's sprinkled, like how I used to complain for so long, there are no pastures, no rainfall, only dry riverbed and lean cows tied to rain stuff trees. Thank you. And done. Thank you so much, Ty. And now mm -hmm. I'll pass it over to Lucy. If you, yeah. Can you, yeah. Are you there, Lucy? Yeah, sorry, lots of things happening on the screen. Hi. Hi. Yeah, thanks for having me and hello everyone. Thanks for coming. Um, I'm gonna read, I'm gonna show some slides as, um, and read from my text that I've written in conversation with this exhibition. So I think I'll just get into it. Let me see one second. Whilst reality shivers, we hear the sound of something trying to make a sound. Here, we will allow both writing and art to operate separately, while offering the hope of dialogue, reciprocity and poetry between the two. And if we observe the present becoming, is all art in the future perfect? Completed gesture, action and utterance that evades becoming past because it only rises up to meet us in the future where we encounter it. Cold or comfortable, 
stock still or shifting closer and further from walls stretched wide behind the tangible expressions we place on top of them. A single figure reaches into the inky black of plate glass. Only their two legs visible, a foot arched in the airless void. The shape of this body, queer, androgen, appears unmirrored from ground or fixed form, not always recognisable as human. In another plate, the body stands, scanned from the toes upwards. Our eyes tread circles around the series of images, looking in lines from one to the other, across a body of work and a body working. Like next generation phone screens whose surfaces are mirrored in the unique prints that make up a various group of bodies, the language of technology speaks to futurity when attempting to describe its own present. What has been deserted in the burn and illumination of this figure who moves like liquid glitched? There is distinctness, the landscape of the body depth mapped and made geological. Curving limbs worked away from words, splashes of hair we wear on our heads and in soft places, atmospheres over stories. There is more than one way for a body to become. And if we observe the present sensing, what is peripheral? Walking around with a friend, eyes lowered whilst speaking, some weeds where the pavement meets walls. Some new student halls unpeeled from scaffolding, the looping grid of grey metal fences. The multiple, an S added on to the end of most words, sheets of paper to be seen through from different angles. Lines changed as the layers etch into each other, blurred like the filament in a light bulb as it warms to a glow. What word is an image? Think catalytic, the movement of building around us, the splay of pages in a book, the apartments of future tenses. The swerve of light leaked onto 35 millimeter film where a document becomes memory, becomes ominous, becomes multitudes. When multiplicity undermines the order of the system, what word is an image? Vulnerability brims in eruptions of color. And then we photocopy into near oblivion. The loss of something we're not quite aware of, stacked, misplaced, erased, the lines we take for granted, in words hushed at the corners of pillows and streets. The often discarded and overlooked irrational feelings misaligned with the images before us. The crumble of stones on our hands as we push off up from the ground. And if we observe the present dancing, the idea of poetic justice advances, the small town joy of queer rurality. Pink petals, a fuchsia bedsheet, the body behind it sketched by the light moving through. Each print's softness, a moist ship we press our lips to, erotic, lost haptics. Sensation in co-occupation with the plastic of polytunnels, not the lasers of dance floors. But where does touch happen? Waist deep in rapeseed blooms, a body dances alone, soft focus, holding its eyes closed against the colours of dawn. With gold sparkle curtains pinned up for inspection, the portrait becomes pine scented, earth, stillness. Post club, we throw back our heads and scream, wait a little longer in the field or the dream. So the end of the night can expand in the air, imbue the calls of blackbirds and tractor engines with a thousand embraces. Warm and uneasy in our sleepy confluence of communities. Observe this. There is no threat of violence against cherry blossom pink, the stretch and growth of it, the slow efforts towards safety or calm. The idea of running away becomes running forward and we're back. Lengths of limbs, concealed skin, a performativity not as the fact of queer identity, but the force of a kind of queer doing that is part of the animating force that drives us. And if we observe the present making itself, then an inseparability of reality and art might occur. And to all that that gives, we will stare back coolly. 
belt masks and skater slacks, inflatable shirts that lift off the gallery ground, clothes that conceal and reveal identity at the same time. Loring and Junior, both the same person and not at all, show how pandrogyny as a concept is not about gender, it's about the ending of all binary perception. And these words show how speaking in opposites melts heads. Each sign trying to reflect only serves to cancel the last one out. Our perception splits across glossy prints where image is living in variance, where art has its own life off the page. And our moment here in the gallery is a meeting with the materials that make this. The leather of Loring's binder shield is soft like the lobes of her ears. The feathers at the bottom of her silk cape barely graze the ground as she walks. Lines of beading, long gloves marked with the quotidian outlines of women presenting their breasts on the internet. What erotics are rendered here? What is sensation once it's passed through its moment with technology, material and digital, no longer related to the spatter of skin hitting skin or face hot? The gloves detached from an embodied form by the matte black of a green screen cutout, appear hovering, moving over one another, rubbing the surface of the girl's own strokes within their images printed on fabric. Reaching closer, looking towards, we read image and object here, human and non-human, as made of familiar languages, yet constructed with the antagonism of a joke we don't quite get. Like walking up to a group talking mid-conversation, we try to catch up. We talk about time going inside spaces, going somewhere that we don't have access to. Throughout the momentum of making, the time that goes into something can't always be measured. Process and output flattened by the constellations that make practice possible. And if we observe the present moving, printed or projected, dragged into position for just the soft clip of a lens opening and shutting, our one-way walk in the gallery makes it onto most camera rolls we keep in our pockets, but hardly ever look back on. And if we observe the present when the door shuts behind us, when a capture is turning back on itself, the only way it can in words, what image will we have made? And what words can we trace or touch to hear what we think we've seen? Thank you. Gonna try and stop sharing. Cool. Also, I forgot to say that I had some, a few citations in my reading that um, I just wanted to put the references to those in the chat. So I'm gonna do that now. But thank you, everyone. Thank you very much, Lucy. That was great, everybody. Thank you to all of our writers, to Harvey, Ty, and Lucy. That was great to actually have all the works brought to life together in one space before they go to print, which is lovely. So we're going to move on to the Q&A now. And just a reminder to the audience members that um, feel free to pop questions as we go along into the chat box and we'll try to get to them all. But if we're stuck for time, unfortunately, we won't get to everybody's questions this evening. So um, we'll start um, just generally. This is a kind of a question going out to all of the writers. Um, how did you approach writing about new artworks? And Lucy, Harvey and Ty, Ty just feel free to jump in. Um, Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Go, ahead. go ahead, Lucy. Harvey, go ahead. It's all right, you go. <laughs> okay, sorry. Thanks. Um, did you ask about how we, sorry, I'm still in like reading mode, but Tara, did you ask about how we approached writing? How you approached writing about the new artworks, yeah. I suppose, yeah, for me, like I spent time with the work, although it was digitally because the artists were like spread out around Ireland, um, spent work looking through a screen at the work, which is something we're used to at the minute on my laptop. And then I spent some time with the artists as well, um, talking with them on Zoom and those kind of things. And I think... I had some ideas of things that we might talk about or areas where there might be like a crossover between our ideas and research and through those kind of studio visits where I got to talk to them um I just got a really good insight into the thinking behind the work for the show that I kind of 
I suppose I almost got a bit overwhelmed actually by maybe delving into it too much. And then my task felt some like some sort of kind of distillation, like trying to condense these practices that felt very expansive with a lot going on into some other sort of form, which was text. Um, but yeah, I suppose that's kind of how I started off or how I approached it. Yeah, I suppose I worked in like um, a similar way to Lucy, like um, it was like a really incredible opportunity to like talk to all of the artists and like never get the opportunity like normally. So even though I wasn't there like physically present for you know any of the process, um, it would really like open my eyes to like how expansive um, and really like how exciting all the work of the artists are. And like, there's just like, yeah, so much to write about so I tried to like condense it down into something um meaningful but um yeah could write lots more also um yeah that's great that one of our questions I, oh sorry Ty yeah go on I think I think for me I was able to approach the the artwork from the thematic sorry from the from the team particularly I think I love Climate futures uh, is something I've been passionate for. It's an issue that that is common, more like it's prone to this part of the divide. So I wanted to exploit a little more. I think I've been writing on climate futures. That should be I, I did some writing last year. So I think this more like Green Commission was an opportunity for me to expand my um, to expand my field on on climate futures. I think that's what from I think the team was what moved me to write to develop some little response to the artwork. Yeah, that's really interesting. Um and I guess yeah that one of our uh one of the things that we wanted to talk about was the difference between um not actually being able being able to like physically be in the space with the artwork because um both Harvey and Ty weren't aren't based in Belfast and weren't able to be in the gallery um, and I guess that's something that we like pre-pandemic you wouldn't think maybe to have had writers not here respond to something so it's really nice that we are able to do that now or kind of like think about ways of doing that um, and Lucy because uh, she's from Belfast, was able to like come over and actually like be at the install. Um, so I wondered if you wanted to talk about like what it was like to maybe be at the install, Lucy, and what it, the what it was like to write about things that you had this like disconnect with, and whether um, um, like whether that remove created like unexpected things in your writing um yeah so I don't know who wants to go first me yeah okay I didn't get the question you asked sorry oh uh Is so that? so just about the idea of um writing about art when it's when you're like geographically removed from it and not being in the space with in the gallery and being surrounded by the art, but instead interacting with it purely online. Okay, I think for me, I most of my works um, starts from experiencing more like um, I think most of my work starts from experiencing something. I think what happened was as a result, I that as I said earlier before. That seem particularly climate futures. If you if you look at it generally, I said something about it in my one of my poems that all climate refugees are pastoralists, but the reversal is not the same. I believe that um, most of we down in this part of the divide we pay the high price for carbon emissions and. Uh, carbon emissions and I think the the offshoot, the consequence of climate change. So I was looking at it from that aspect, even though definitely I wasn't in the gallery. I think I 
wanted to respond from more like my own, I think from my own perception of how I see most of the artwork. I think that's my answer for the question. Mm -hmm. Harvey, did you have um, a similar experience, a different experience? Yeah, I mean, I think the last time I was in an exhibition space was like October 2020, um, which just feels like a different different world, like different time. Um, but yeah, I kind of like initially I approached my writing and I was trying to like imagine physically being in the space and kind of like describing like my thought pattern and like how my brain was kind of like moving. Um, and that didn't really end up like being the format of, of the writing. Um, but I actually found it through like engaging with the artists and doing like, yeah, like mini like studio visits on Zoom. I kind of felt like I was physically present and had much more of an idea of like how the artists work in terms of like process. So I saw like their works in progress and then saw like the finished like result, which is really like amazing to see the works, you know, at the beginning and then in progress and then the final result and how those how these thoughts change. So um, yeah, it was a really interesting experience, definitely. Great. Lucy, did you have like the opposite experience? I feel like I'm saying the same words over and over again. Yeah, I suppose, sorry, I was just having a bit of a fisherman's friend for my cold, but um, <laughs> seeing, yeah, I think like seeing the install and being there in person did, it influenced um the writing for me a lot more than I thought it would because I suppose we're just used to having that kind of digital remove at the minute but um I suppose like I've been visiting Catalyst for years like being from Belfast and the space is so cold and big and kind of cavernous and tucked away down this entry in a vague position in Belfast that I would call the back of boots or behind boots like the shop but um I suppose so much of like writing about or with art comes from writers encounters with the work in a gallery and you know that might be in the form of anecdote and description and I was aware of that I suppose whenever I was working on this project and kind of unsure and sometimes I'm unsure of how to read work that's very grounded in the encounter with um work in a gallery so yeah I think that was kind of in all my mind but also that trip to Belfast when I got to see the install was just really amazing because it was when things were opening up again so it meant lots of yummy pints in the pub <laughs> and visiting the space it was so strange um I think also I talked a little bit in the work about um like scaffolding and that was in relation to Kate McElroy's work and we talked about things like construction and um different ideas about that um and the artist's position in like urban environment but I think Catalyst like not even like seeing the works inside the gallery but just like being able to visit a gallery um yeah it made a big difference to what I was thinking about um definitely as I was working on the work and I think also like thinking about the idea of futures which I which was our you know the kind of concept which the show was based around was kind of unsettling whenever things were opening up because it felt like we were having like returns to things like a return to galleries being open a going back or a return to like walking down this street I've walked a lot of times before um so yeah it was it was, it was strange but it was really great to be there nice yeah that's great um yeah the, uh what Harvey said about the interaction with the artist like before the work was finished so that I feel like that was something that we actually hadn't like necessarily planned on with this but mm -hmm. then we realized that that was something that we could do and was a way of kind of creating a really lovely collaboration between the artists and the writers and I think um yeah I hope that it's worked and been like something that maybe we can continue to do um yeah I was thinking of that while everybody was like talking there about their individual themes about the relationship that writing has to visual art and how that's developing and changing and how we can like the like that's a future in itself that's kind of challenging and exciting and I don't know how like has like you know I suppose a question for the writers would be like has this kind of project um changed the way you kind of like view your own process towards like responding to visual art or has it expanded a part of your process um, if anybody wants to throw an idea in there. 
Um, I mean, to be honest, like I'm because I studied photography um, when I graduated last year. I'm just like amazed by anybody that has managed to like sustain having a, like an artistic practice over the last like 18 months. Like I think um, the four artists, like it's incredible like how much like the visions they have that like are so strong and they like really trust in their like ability and their craft, which has been like amazing to see. And like, that's something that I like do not have in my own practice, which is why like I kind of, kind of like come to it sometimes and then leave it for longer periods of time. Um, so for me, just like seeing how they work and like their, how strong like their visions are has been incredible. I hope they're all here to uh, hear that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, well, thank you, everybody. Um, our audience is being a bit quiet with questions, so I think we'll move on to our final readings. But just thank you for all of you for your like engaging conversation. We actually have some nice comments, though, from people. Um, Maeve McNutt has said, in stars clapping, I love the diversity and tone among all these texts. And then from the artist Kitch Doom, Wow, unbelievable work, such beautiful and engaging responses. Thank you, Lucy, Harvey, and Ty. It's been an amazing experience to collaborate with you all. So, um, so we're going to have just three more short readings. Um, I think it's fine to keep us all on screen or you can turn your cameras off if that's what you'd like to do. So we'll have Harvey, then Ty, then Lucy, just to finish it, finish it off and wrap it up. And if you'd like to see the publication, then drop us an email or pop into the gallery if you're able to um, at the beginning of June. Yeah, okay. <laughs> July, ah! <laughs> yeah, the show closes on the 10th of July, so we'll hopefully have the publication launched before then and it'll be available on online and in the gallery for purchases. So, so let's get cracking. Shall I go first with my oh, reading? Sorry, yeah, please. Yeah, no worries. Um, sorry, the neighbours just started hoovering. Uh, brilliant timing as always. So hopefully it's not, not too distracting. Um, over the last year and a half, I've spent time in South Africa, in Eastern Europe and at home in Scotland. And one thing that has been on my mind constantly is how queer people in these spaces can imagine liberation when sectarianism, which is rife in Glasgow, my adopted home of six years, conflict and segregation are a reality or are within living memory. How can queer people imagine liberation when even the privilege of cultural and national identity is not yet won? As I've been away, sadly, I have been unable, unable to be physically present to witness the exhibition. But strangely, after having the opportunity to engage with the artists, and their work in a really intimate way. I feel more present in this exhibition than any other before. The last time I was in an exhibition space was October 2020, so it has been a real pleasure to work alongside Catalyst and see the work unfold from afar. A big congratulations to the four artists. The exhibition is a fant fantastic achievement and in these spiritually, emotionally, physically, financially challenging times, it is incredible to see futures imagined in four totally expansive, provocative and exciting ways. Thank you. Thank you, Harvey. Oh, Tara, do you want to? <laughs> uh, yep, yeah, so we'll move on to Ty. Thank you, Ty. Okay, um, hi everyone. And I've been reading the last poem for this event. It's titled, um, Generation Greta, was written after Charlie Wong. This planet will again be stone. In fields that used to flower, the trees stand. There are so many ways to foretell our apocalypse. Will she be happy? That child in my future. Today we are just learning how the earth, today we are just learning how the earth reacts to her, our inertial, the opposite of the world on fire. How has greed brought us here? My head is heavy from the cloud. These trees have too many branches. My little sister is too famished to eat and super thick to sleep. And yet the fear of losing our childhood. I know the feeling, the recurring nightmares and the ghosts of mudstone. 
Don't we all long to be spring, bored and great. In this land without a silver fire, that is home, was home. The best sing in the tropics, I understand so well. How you can only hear net zero emissions so many times before you stop believing in the future. This morning, I stood once again on a boardwalk, lined with skunk cabbage, lined with skunk cabbage. On my notepad, I scribbled the word panic. When I say I watch my mother's lean calves turn off like the night sun, I mean, I don't know what hope is, if not an act of faith in this world. Thank you. Thank you very much, Taya. That was beautiful. Um, and then we'll just finish off with Lucy then. Thanks so much. I just wanted to say thanks to everybody, like all the artists and also Manuel and Tara and the Catalyst team and Claire and the Belfast Photo Festival team, because it's been a really, really fun project to work on together. Um, and uh, yeah, I have got some images and I just wanted to say thanks to um, Void for um, at the gallery in Derry, Londonderry for letting me show these images. I'll put the credits in the chat if anybody, so you can just see them all if you're interested. And this is three minutes, so hopefully people don't have Zoom fatigue at this point and you can do another three minutes. And this is an excerpt from another text I've been working on kind of at the same time and it because it's looking at photographs I thought might be um, something interesting to share with you all this evening. Walking through the street, a poetic proposition enters my field of vision, an image written over the space where fast food adverts and jobs for tech companies arrive each month cyclical and tall. Does poetry write a new life on top of the old one or does it write into gaps, inter and between? The art on the billboard speaks to the street, conversing, holding the etymology of this word, it turns with my feet, stopped. Looking feels like trying vainly to weigh the quiet fringes, the trailing filigree of association which are part of its meaning. The viewer knows in their unseeing of what would normally be on the billboard that they've encountered something else, interruption as a place, an interstice, a station. Someone said, how do you know how to listen out for something you do not know? Here in the stopped walk or passing glance that echoes loosely inside the rest of the day, interruption reveals itself as interval. Some propose to attend to the interval between art and words as an active space. What happens when we think of this interval not as active, but acute? An acute angle, the two sides pulled close enough to touch where doing and thinking meet. In the chase of ideas I rush to write down, when so many interruptions open, all that ends up on the page is interval. The moment before writing, the moment after it's written. The billboard says, around me there is only blankness. And beside my street there's a body of water, brackish clay, flat metallic reds. It's more than I can say. Maybe the force of writing is on loan from a place that traffics in emotion and excess, from things that build without stopping or full stops, thick millimetre by thick millimetre, slowing, not made visible unless viewed as a landscape. But landscapes are heavy and fixed. From this view, from this critical distance, I don't believe thinking can retain the lightness or bring words to ground without weight as it is wont to. I prefer the most speculative spaces, to take things in parts, extreme close-ups, and to fall through lines with words that may be trying to say something, but not enough to know what they're saying. Thanks, and I hope everybody enjoys the football tonight, if they're watching it. When I was thinking about angles, um, I thought that, yeah, so much football watching has been done recently. And actually my friend Kate that's here tonight has, um, reminded me about the geometry of football in the Euros and so thinking about angles in that text felt good to talk about um, because there's so much football around us. Mm -hmm. I hope people are enjoying it. Thank you so much. Thank you Lucy, that was lovely. Um, so that's the coming to the end of our event now. I just want to say thank you to 
everybody who's attended tonight and anybody who's putting in questions now. We're sorry that we can't get to them, but also just wanted to say a big thank you to Lucy, Ty and Harvey for presenting such beautiful pieces of work and we're really excited to put them into a beautiful little publication together and have that out and blossoming in the world soon. And I just want to say a second thank you to um, Kitch Doom, Donald Talbot, Ben Malcolmson and Kate McElroy because they've all attended this tonight and been here and are extremely talented artists who have brought this exhibition together and made it what it is. So um, it continues until the 10th of July and like that, the publication will hopefully be launched before then. And a quick thank you as well to Michael and Claire from the Belfast Photo Festival as well for making this what it is as well and partnering with this for this event and thanks to the Arts Council of Northern Ireland as well for their support and ongoing support which is always well appreciated <laughs> so thank you all.